Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take you through the structures of eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells for HRA A-level biology, which is part of the cells unit. Also, I'll be going through a few exam style questions and their mark schemes at the end of the video. And in the comments section, I will be putting timestamps so you can skip to the relevant sections that you want to revise on if you prefer that. So let's get started. So, firstly, what is a eukaryotic cell? A eukaryotic cell is a cell which has these things called membrane-bound organelles. Now, this is a crucial term that you must remember, as it is the main thing that separates eukaryotic from prokaryotic cells. This includes plant and animal cells. Here I have a picture of a regular animal cell. Now what I mean by a membrane bound organelle is an organelle which has a membrane around it, for example mitochondria, nucleus and chloroplasts. <coughs> so the first organelle that we want to talk about here is, so the first organelle we're going to talk about is the cell surface membrane. Now the cell surface membrane is made up of a phospholipid bilayer, which means that there are two layers of phospholipids with the phosphate group head facing outwards and the hydrophobic fatty acid tails facing inwards. Their main function is to control the entry and exit of extracellular substances in the cell. <clears throat> this sometimes requires active transport or membrane proteins depending on the charge and size of the substance to be entered or exited from the cell. So this is what a phospholipid bilayer looks like. So two layers of phospholipids, phosphate group head facing outwards as you can see and the fatty acid tails facing inwards. And also you, you can see we have these membrane proteins, two types, channel proteins and carrier proteins. We also have glycoproteins and cholesterol molecules which will become more important when we move on to the transport across membranes topic. So the next main organelle, which is arguably the most important organelle, is the nucleus. Nucleus has a double membrane, which ensures more efficient entry and exit controls. Now, the main role of the nucleus that you may already know is it contains chromosomes. Let's get my pen. Chromosomes, which are consisted of protein-bound linear DNA. So the DNA in a in a chromosome is associated or wrapped around tightly with proteins called histones. So histones. Again, I apologise for my terrible writing. Also, they have one more nucleoli, which is a more denser part of the nucleus, and that job is to synthesize what we call rRNA or ribosomal RNA which is what makes up ribosomes whose job is to perform protein synthesis. So here we have a diagram of a nucleus as you can see a double membrane these orange structures here which are called nuclear pores whose main job is to export recently transcribed RNA mRNA into the cytoplasm. And this darker or denser part here is the nucleolus. So the next organelle is the mitochondria. Here we can see the mitochondria is kind of like a bean shape and again has a double membrane. And these folds, as you can see, folds here in pink, which are called cristae. And the reason why these are folded is to provide a large surface area. This means that the rate of aerobic respiration is maximally increased. And obviously the function of the mitochondria is not the powerhouse of the cell, as you are, you are often told in popular culture, but is the site of aerobic respiration. The key thing here is the word aerobic. You often don't get the mark if you just write respiration. And the purpose of respiration is mainly to produce ATP to provide energy for processes such as muscle contraction. So next thing is chloroplasts. 
Now, I have highlighted this in green because chloroplasts are only present in plant cells. That is because the function of the chloroplast is to act as a site of photosynthesis. Now, the structure of the chloroplast is interesting. It's got a double membrane, as with the mitochondria and nucleus, but also has these kind of what they look like pancake-like structures. These pancake-like structures are called granum. And the individual, what we call pancakes, are called thylakoids. So the what we call stack, the whole stack of these are called granum and the individual ones are called thylakoid. It's important that you don't get mixed up between the two. These granum are connected by these networks called lame lamella. The chloroplast also contains a fluid or lack of space called stroma. The function of the stroma will, will, will become more important as we do the photosynthesis topic in A2 content. Next thing is a Golgi apparatus or the Golgi body. The the main job of the Golgi apparatus is to modify proteins, for example, add in sugars or carbohydrates, etc, etc, so they can perform specialist functions. Also, it has a role in packaging and secretion of proteins to other organelles and other cells. As you can see, the Golgi apparatus is made up of these flattened sacs, as you can see here by the diagram. These flattened sacs are called cisternae. Also, these circles here, these spheres, are what we call Golgi vesicles. The job of the Golgi vesicles is to take the packaged proteins and get them ready for export to other cells or organs. So as you can see, cisternae are the names given for the flattened sacs, and these are the Golgi vesicles here. Next, we're going to talk about lysosomes. Lysosomes are small membranous vesicles. Their main function is to get rid of unwanted cells or organelles that have, provide no benefit to the cell. They contain proteolytic enzymes. The term proteolytic means splits proteins. These are called lysosomes. The main job of lysosomes is to destroy pathogens in the immune response in the process of phagocytosis. So here we see it is a small spheric membranous vesicle. You don't need to know too much about the structure of lysosomes. Next we're going to talk about ribosomes. As you may recall, ribosomes are round shaped organelles that synthesise protein. More specifically, they synthesise protein in the translation step of protein synthesis, which will become more clear when we get onto that topic later on. Some of these attach to the surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which we will get onto next. Rough endoplasmic reticulum, or RER. Now, I just want to add here that the examiner often doesn't accept if you just write RER. So I would recommend that you, I know it's a pain, but you need to write rough endoplasmic reticulum to make it clear to the examiner that this is what you are on about. Now, the main thing that distinguishes the rough endoplasmic reticulum is that it has a large number of ribosomes attached to its surface. This is incredibly important to know. Now, as it has ribosomes attached to its surface, its main function is to synthesise and make changes or modify the proteins. As you can see here, they're made by a series of membranous networks with, as you can see by these purple circles here, ribosomes, which synthesise the proteins and the RER basically processes them, processes them for them to be packaged into Golgi vesicles to be further modified by the Golgi apparatus. Now we're going to talk about the smooth endoplasmic reticulum or the SER. Again, please remember to write the full name instead of just SER. Now, the main thing that distinguishes smooth endoplasmic reticulum from the rough endoplasmic reticulum is the fact that the smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have ribosomes attached to its surface. Please don't get confused between the two. 
The main function, therefore, of the SCR is lipid synthesis, toxin modification and glycogenesis, which is the conversion between glucose and glycogen for energy storage. And here we can see this structure here, this dark blue structure here, is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which is often closely associated with the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Next we're going to talk about the cell wall. Again, this is in green as it is only present in plant cells, mostly. Now the function of the cell wall is to determine the strength, shape and support of the cell. It is composed of cellulose in eukaryotic cells. As we have seen in the biological molecules unit, cellulose is a polymer of beta glucose. And it also controls turgid pressure, which is providing resistance to osmotic changes, therefore regulating water content. Here we can see the outermost layer of this plant cell here is a cell wall composed of cellulose, providing rigidity and support to the cell. Now the next thing here, as I'm, I'm going to talk about, is the vacuole. The vacuole is made up of various membranous sacs in eukaryotes. The function of the vacuole is to store water, nutrients and waste products. Now, there is a difference between the vacuoles in animal and plant cells. As you can see on the left here in animal cells, there are various vacuoles. In this particular diagram, there are three. So they are more numerous in animal cells. But as you can see here on the right, the vacuole is more permanent and it's much larger. This is because it has important roles in storing water for photosynthesis and to control the turgid pressure as it is more important for plants to control their water content and to regulate water. The last thing that we want to point out is that eukaryotic cells can become specialised by the process of differentiation, which we will come on to later in the A2 content when we talk about gene technologies. These specialised cells can then become organised into tissues, organs such as the heart, lungs and organ systems such as the cardiovascular system and the digestive system. Now, uh, as you can see here from this diagram, these are a few examples of specialised cells. So here we have leaf cells, stem cells, which are actually unspecialised cells, root cells, muscle cells, nerve cells, which have a very specialised structure, and intestine cells. And as I've said here already, they can become in, organised into organs and organ systems. So, for example, the muscle cells here can become organised into organs such as the heart and then into organ systems such as the cardiovascular system. So now we are going to go on to prokaryotic cells. So what is a prokaryotic cell and what is the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells? I'll just try and get this to work. Okay, so the main thing is that prokaryotic cells do not contain membrane-bound organelles such as mitochondria and nuclei. They are also often smaller than eukaryotes and include cells such as bacteria and viruses. They also have smaller ribosomes. So as you can see here, oh no, this resembles a prokaryotic ribosome which is 70s in its size and this resembles a eukaryotic ribosome which is 80s size. You don't need to know much about the numerical values of the sizes or what it means, you just need to know that prokaryotes have smaller ribosomes. So we need to talk about prokaryotic DNA as this is very different from eukaryotic DNA. Prokaryotic DNA is not enclosed in a nucleus, it is free in the cytoplasm. This is obviously because a nucleus is a membrane-bound organelle and prokaryotic cells do not contain membrane-bound organelles. Also, another difference is, is that it is a single circular molecule and not associated with proteins. So, if I draw it, 
it kind of looks like this. It's not a perfect circle, but it is circular, so it is attached at two ends. So it's often kind of a strange shape like this, free floating in the cytoplasm. It is not enclosed in the nucleus. That is the key thing to remember here. Not enclosed in the nucleus. So the next thing is that many prokaryotes have what we call plasmids. Now plasmids are like extra pieces of DNA. As you can see here, they are extra circular pieces of DNA that are different from the main bacterial or viral or whatever prokaryote we're talking about DNA. Now the function of these plasmids is to often provide extra genetic material. This is useful in gene technologies such as tramp transformations as they contain antibiotic resistance genes. Now you don't need to know a lot about the functions of plasmids at this point in the course. You just need to be aware that prokaryotes have these plasmids, or often they do. Also, many prokaryotes have a what we call a capsule surrounding the cell, which is what we can see here by this kind of pink area. And the main function of the capsule is to provide attachment functions and protection from phagocytosis and also to allow entry to host cells. This is why we often associate capsules with a vi virulence factor, which is the thing that makes the bacteria or the virus infectious, mainly viruses. Also, as you know already, many prokaryotes have flagella. This particular bacteria here only has one flagella, but many bacteria and viruses often have lots of flagella. And some even have flagella pointing out the front of what we call anterior flagella, but you don't need to worry about that. Now, the main function of flagella is to aid locomotion, so to allow them to spread more easily. The last thing you need to know about prokaryotic cells is a kind of introduction to virus structure. Now this is a diagram that I have actually created myself, showing you the structures that you need to know about. The first thing here is this little squiggly thing here. This is the genetic material. Now the genetic material in viruses can either be DNA or RNA. Now if the genetic material is RNA, then it needs to be reversely transcribed to DNA in order for the virus to replicate, which we will get onto when we talk about HIV later on in the course. The genetic material in the virus is encased in this protein coat kind of thing structure here called a capsid, which protects the genetic material from degradation. The next thing is the spikes, which you will have often seen if you are watching this during the coronavirus pandemic, which is very serious at the moment. And what ca causes the viruses to enter the cells. These are what we call attachment proteins. Now, these attachment proteins attach to receptors on the host cell, which is a cell that the virus is infecting. The attachment of the attachment proteins to the receptor allows the virus to enter the cell and inject its genetic material into the cell for it to be replicated to produce new viruses. Again, we will get onto viruses more and go into it into more detail when we talk about HIV later on in the chapter. So that is it now for the content and now we can get on to some exam style questions. So I'll just get my highlighter out now. So this diagram shows a eukaryotic cell. Remember to highlight this word, eukaryotic, as you don't want to get it confused with prokaryotic cells. Complete the table by giving the letter labelling the organelle that matches the function. I should get my pen out for this question. So here we have the organelle's function here, which is protein synthesis, which, as you remember, is a ribosome. Now, as you can see, we can't see three ribosomes here in the diagram, but here we can see 
a membranous structure with little circles stood up on the outside. This resembles a rough endoplasmic reticulum. And as you can recall from earlier in the video, the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes studded on the surface. And here you can see that letter L points to the little ribosome studs on the surface. So therefore, the answer is L. So the next one, modifies protein. For example, adds carbohydrate to protein. Now we said earlier that this is the job for the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi body, which consists of a series of flattened membranous sacs called cisternae. Now I can see here, letter H points to one of these flattened membranous series of sacs. So we can conclude that that is H. Now the last one here is aerobic respiration. Now, as we said earlier, again, this is what the mitochondria does, which is a bean-shaped cell with folds called cristae, which it's quite clear here that this is this structure here. And the letter N points to the mitochondria here, so therefore the answer is N. So let's check the mark scheme just to make sure. Protein synthesis, that's L. Modifies protein H. With aerobic respirations N. And this is three marks, so you get one mark for each correct answer. So this is the next question. The scientists measured cell damage by measuring the activity of lysosomes. Give one function of lysosomes. And it is a one mark question. As it says, just give one function, you don't need to write two. You don't get any extra marks if you write two. And you don't need to explain the function either as it is just a give question, so you just need to state it. Now I've put, put here, breaks down unwanted cells. Let's check the mark scheme. Breaks down cells, or breaks down cell parts, or breaks down toxins. You can put either one of these, it doesn't really matter, you still get the marks. Now here it says that you need to write down the idea of a breakdown or a digestion not just damage. So you don't get the mark if you just write damages the cells. Its main job is to break down the cells. So you don't get the mark if you point that if it damages the cells or the cells part or the toxins. Let's go on to the next question. The figure below shows a photograph of a chloroplast taken with an electron microscope. Name the parts of the chloroplast labeled A and B. Uh, this is actually not a very clear diagram here, as this is something that I found quite annoying whilst I was doing my A-levels. The diagrams are not very clear, so it can be tricky to distinguish the organelles. But as you can see here, letter A kind of points to an empty space within the chloroplast. And as you said earlier in the video, this empty space, well it's not really an empty space, it's more of a fluid. It's called the stroma. And B here points to this kind of stack of mem membranous sacs, which we likened to stacks of pancakes earlier. Remember, do not write stacks of pancakes in your exam. That's just an it's just an analogy that I like to use. And remember that reference to the whole stack of membranes is called the granum. Don't get it confused with thylakoids, because a thylakoid is just a single one. So if we look at the mark scheme again, A is the stroma, and B is the granum. Now it says here, except thylakoid, so you can write thylakoid instead of granum, it doesn't matter which one you put. And that is two marks, so you get one mark for each correct answer. Now here is the next question, which is another not very clear diagram. The figure below shows a microscopic image of a plant cell. Make sure you highlight the word plant cell, as this often gives clues to what organelles there are. Now here it says, give the name and function of the structures labelled W and Z. Now letter W points to this kind of dense and dark organelle here. Now as chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, the chloroplast often appears quite dark in the image. So we can conclude that W is a chloroplast. And as we said earlier, the function of a chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis. And Z here point to this rather large 
membrane bound organelle with a darker part in the centre, which we identified earlier as the nucleus. The function of the nucleus is it, that it contains a DNA or genetic material. So let's check the mark scheme. W is the chloroplast, which is the site of photosynthesis. One mark, Z is the nucleus, which contains DNA, or you can put chromosomes, or you can put it holds genetic information of the cell. That is two marks. So to get each mark, you need to write the name of the organelle and the function. Now, I think this is the last question. Cells that secrete enzymes contain a lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum, RER, and a large Golgi apparatus. Describe how the RER is involved in the production of enzymes. Now, as you can maybe recall from the biological molecules section, enzymes are proteins, and proteins are synthesized by ribosomes on the surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So I can put here that the RER has ribosomes attached to its surface, which synthesizes the enzymes. So let's look at the mark scheme. Rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes. Remember, it's crucial that you write the word ribosomes here as it is underlined in the question, so you must write this to get the mark. And also here it says accepts, contains or stores. So you can write that the RER contains ribosomes or that it stores ribosomes. The second mark here says to make protein, which an enzyme is. And also it's susceptible to write what I write, which is to synthesize the enzymes because they are proteins. Here it says, except in amino acids joined together, dash polypeptide, which is what a protein is, you need to not write makes amino acids, as that is the role in translation step of protein synthesis. It's not really relevant to the function of the RER in this unit. And as it says reject, if you put this in your answer, you do not get any marks at all for the question, even if you got this first marking point correct. Also, it says ignore glycoprotein, which is the role of the Golgi apparatus. As it says ignore here, if you write this, you can still get the mark, it, one mark, if you wrote this marking point here. Now, I'll describe how the Golgi apparatus is involved in secretion of enzymes. As I said earlier, it modifies proteins. Quite an easy question there. You don't need to write any explanations that it is only a one mark question. So, so if we look at the mark scheme, the Golgi apparatus modifies protein, which we wrote, so we got get the mark. You can put either this or packages slash puts into Golgi vesicles, as that is another function, or transports to the cell surface or transports to the vacuole. Now it says here, except protein has sugar added, as this is an example of a modification that the Golgi apparatus can carry out. And it also accepts lysosome formation, which is something I didn't mention earlier, but it is also a function of the Golgi apparatus. However, it says here, reject protein synthesis, as this is not a function of the Golgi apparatus. You don't get any marks if you write that, as it says, reject. Okay, that is all I want to say. Yep. Uh, please comment below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.